Well, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Simone, and I'm a PhD student at Bangor University. And today I'll show you some of the things that we did to make our online experiments on paired associate learning more engaging and uh, child friendly as well. Um, needless to say, you know, the children and adults are two completely different uh, populations. So the way children engage with experiments and online testing is completely different from adults in many different aspects. Um, with few exceptions, I would say, uh, most adults will complete our experiments with no major problems, right? Um, provided that, you know, they're given clear and detailed instructions. Uh, children, on the other hand, will inevitably need more help and guidance, and they might get bored faster as well. And another issue is that sometimes parents or guardians might want to help the child uh, during an experimental test task, which I appreciate something that they do with the best intention, but the data collected under certain circumstances will probably not be a true reflection of the child's performance, and we won't be able to use their data um, in our reports. I'm not sure if this is uh, on top of the, uh, okay. Um, so to circumvent that, we found that having a research assistant guiding and motivating the child through the experiments uh, will produce the best quality data. And the application which we have been using for that is Microsoft Teams. Uh, and what we do is we request the child to share their screen with us so that we can keep track of what they're doing in the experiment as if we were with them in the lab. And with the parents or guardians permission, uh, we also sometimes ask them to give us control of their screen uh, to make sure that relevant details are entered correctly and also that the several steps in our experiments are followed as expected. Um, what we also did was we provided our research assistants with lots of training so that they could be able to administer the task effectively. And this was uh, especially relevant because our paradigm required verbal responses to be scored online, and we also had multiple lists. So it was important that they were on top of um, everything. And we also made sure that the research assistants themselves piloted the task as if they were participants. Um, and because we also administered a battery of cognitive and literacy tests, uh, we made sure that the research assistants uh, spent some time admin administering the tasks uh, to each other as well. And uh, we believe that these steps allowed us to anticipate and even fix some of the issues prior to starting uh, data collection with the children. And in addition to having a research assistant supporting and encouraging uh, the children, one thing which we also introduced to our task was gamification. Uh, which I'm, I, I know that is going to be discussed uh, extensively uh, later today. Uh, but put simply, gamification is the application of game mechanisms in non-game environments. And one of the main goals of gamification is to enhance motivation levels. And there are many different game elements which can potentially be applied in behavioral science, but this has something to do with one of the questions in the chat um, uh, earlier today. Uh, but it's really important that we evaluate and decide which of these elements are the most suitable for the purposes of our investigation. Um, and I think the gamification element, which most people probably think about first, is the introduction of some sort of reward based on the uh, participants' performance. Uh, but we know that this is not always feasible for some investigations because sometimes when we provide feedback to participants or when we tell them how well or how badly they are doing, uh, we might end up introducing some sort of bias to their performance, which could, of course, um, negatively affect our findings. Excuse me. So this was the case for us to some extent. Uh, we wanted to run a mouse tracking experiment in Gorilla, which would have the classical elements of most uh, mouse tracking tasks. We had two response options at the top of the screen. We had a button at the bottom, which uh, upon clicking on it, um, it would play an audio file. Uh, but apart from a colorful button, which we added to make it slightly more child friendly, we felt that there was not much that could be added to the experimental task itself, because any major mo modifications, such as providing, you know, the children with scores and things like that, could potentially influence our findings. So what we did was we embedded our experimental task in the context of a fictional story which is a very, very easy uh, to implement a gamification element. And we think that by introducing characters to our experiments, uh, we could then use these, uh, these characters 
at several different points uh, throughout the experiment. So for example, um, the characters in our case provided the children with instructions. They gave the children uh, words of encouragement after a certain number of trials as, as if this was an actual game. But that was actually done at regular intervals, regardless of the children's performance. Um, and the narrative we introduced also had a logical plot line. So we had a beginning and end to that story so that the children could have something to look forward to as they did the task. Um, and in our experiment, uh, we were investigating children's ability to learn novel visual phonological associations, uh, but we told the children that the symbols and pseudo words that they would be exposed to came from an alien language and that by playing the game, they would learn some words from that language and then decode a message at the end of the experiment. And the main point with this was just to make uh, the children forget to some extent that they were participating in an experiment and get them interested and curious about the task as much as possible. Um, so we primarily used attribution-free websites to select pictures, short animations, and also sound effects for our tasks. Uh, and some of these websites uh, even allow us to modify the stimuli and adapt them to suit the purposes um, of our task. Um, so we creatively used the screens and also the audio zones in Gorilla to generate a stop motion-like animation uh, in order to demonstrate how the experimental task was supposed to be done. So we recorded a narrative and then we separated the audio files into smaller clips. And when we combined that with some of the illustrations, we were able to tell a simple but effective story to the children without having to rely on a lot of technical expertise. And we didn't even have to uh, code for that. Um, we also used a speech software package to manipulate some audio recordings. Um, we used the, uh, specifically the ch uh, change gender function in Pratt in order to make the instructions of our task sound a little bit more whimsical. Hi, my name is Zop, sure and I come from a galaxy far, far away called Bip. I'm not sure if you could hear this, um, but what we did was we tried to do our best to make every step of the way fun, colorful, intriguing. If we had like a start button, or a relevant transition between the screens, we added sound effects, like this one, whenever we found uh, that was relevant. And these were all very simple changes, which we introduced to provide the children with, you know, to some extent, uh, a multi-sensory experience as much as possible, even though we were testing them remotely. And we tried to do that without uh, changing the paradigm of our experimental task. And just one last thing, which I would like to emphasize, is that a very important step is piloting our tasks uh, with adults, because adults can tell us about potential technical issues they found in the task, or even problems that they think they could emerge, or they can tell us about a potential lack of clarity in the instructions and, and things like that. But even more important than that is that we should pilot the task with an actual child prior to data collection, because well, kids are generally honest and they will let you know exactly what they think about your task. They're also very creative. So if you ask them, they can give you some tips on some aspects which you could perhaps add to the experiments to make it more engaging from the point of view of a child. And because they are your target group, it's probably a good idea to listen to them. Um, this is all I have to share for today. I'd like to thank my supervisor and one of our collaborators for their input. And thank you everyone for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you. So just a reminder, please do put your questions in the Q&A section and the speakers will be picking up on those throughout the rest of the afternoon. But just quickly, do you have any experience or any thoughts about the best way of adapting your really nice online paradigms for normally developing children? For if you were working with different groups of children, you might have issues around learning disability. Sorry, I think I'm having um, some difficulties here with my Zoom. That's okay. Can you hear me? Did you hear the question? Um, hello, can you hear Hi. me? Hi, can you hear me? Okay, I can now. <laughs> Excellent. Very quickly, thank a lovely study and a really nice example of how to um, modify things for online, good online experimentation with children. And the first question that's come through is about what... Do you have any hints or tips or ideas about how you could 
modify the sort of thing you're already doing for work with children with learning disabilities or learning, learning challenges? Um, to be honest, I haven't done any studies with uh, children with learning um, disabilities, but I think probably the only thing that I would say is not to have a long experiment because it's probably very exhausting for them uh, to be staring at the screen for such a long time. And I know that we're trying to do uh, experiments remotely. And the idea is to do that differently from what we used to do in the lab, but definitely having someone with them, talking them through the experiment. I know it's probably very time consuming and it's the opposite of what we've been doing with online research, yeah. but having a research assistant with them is probably the best thing to do yeah. for children with um, some sort of disability, yeah. That's wonderful. Thank you very much.